Welcome to Hype Academy. Welcome to 101 with Orion. I am here today with one of my new friends and I'm going to allow her to introduce herself and the name of her business. Sure. My name is Ariane Craig Jala and I am co-founder of Hype Academy Private School and Academic Resource Center. All right, Ariane, nice to meet you and thank you so much for being a guest. So tell me a little bit about Hype Academy. Ooh. <laughs> um, a little, just a little. Uh, well, Hype Academy is the answer to the, the, the issues that I saw in the school system. So I wanted to teach since I was in the fourth grade many, many years ago. And, uh, <laughs> and I, was, uh, I was inspired by my fourth grade teacher, whose name was uh, Mrs. Flora Weber. Uh, and she walked into the classroom on the first day and I just, I complete, I fell in love with how she interacted with us. Mm -hmm. And this was fourth grade. And I, from that moment decided that I wanted to have that same effect on, uh, on kids, you know, at that time, my age. So I matriculated through high school. It was always in my mind. I'm going to school to be a teacher. And I ended up, uh, I finished from a private school here in the city in New Orleans and went straight to Dillard to get my undergrad in elementary and special ed. And as soon as I finished there, I started teaching while I was working on my master's at UNO. And um, I absolutely hated waking up in the morning. To go teach. 100%. <laughs> hated it. I absolutely hated it. And uh, so fast forwarding, I, I finally got a mentor. You know, I thought it was just, you know, I'm a first year teacher, second year teacher. Maybe I just... Uh, just need to be in it for mm -hmm, a minute mm -hmm. and figure it out. And um, But pretty soon I told my mentor, I said, give me five years and I'll be gone. And uh, my five years was right around Katrina, 2005. Mm -hmm. And I tried it, but I couldn't wait to get mm -hmm. out of the school system. Ended up going into real estate, got my real estate license, started doing some real estate investing. And um, fast forward, because I, like I said, it's a long story, but I ended up... Uh, being asked, we had a family that we were leasing a house to, mm -hmm. and they were homeschooling their twin girls. And she just kept asking, please, 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 I know you're not in <laughs> education anymore, but please, 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 can you homeschool my kids? Okay. And after saying no over and over, and I was done with it, over and over and over, uh, we finally decided that we would uh, turn one of our houses into a school. And okay. eventually, that school became Hype Academy. Okay. And then eventually, we incorporated and moved into uh, a, a building on Bullard out here in the East. And uh, here we are, what, nine years later, since 2011, mm -hmm. um, we started it. But it was truly my answer to what we saw in the school system. Okay. The last thing that... Uh, that I experienced in the school system that made me want to say, you know what, I'm done with the system itself is uh, we were sitting in a department meeting mm -hmm. and our principal, we were kind of going back and forth about the students, their behavior, their performance on benchmarks. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we said to her, how is it that we're being held responsible for these kids and getting them to a certain point, mm -hmm. you know, I got them in sixth, seventh, eighth grade and um, many of them can't read, can't do basic math, but you want us to, you want them to perform yeah. uh, at a certain level, at a certain level on a benchmark. Mm -hmm. And um, her response was, uh, "I don't care what you do, just get them out of here, get them out of here, mm -hmm. and let them be high school's problem next mm -hmm. year." That was the day I decided that hype was going to be the way that I was going to make sure that my kids got what they needed. So here we are. Uh, so. First of all, shout out to Miss Weber. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I we all have that one teacher that we you know we love and we wish we could just go home with yes. and stuff like that. So a special shout out to Miss Weber. Um, special shout out to all of the teachers out there. So tell me a little bit. You know, how'd you come up with Hype Academy? Ah. It is is I I, I will, if I was a child, I want to go to Hype Academy because it sounds cool. Yeah. It sounds amazing. How'd I think that, that the the twins the twins helped us to. 
uh, the, the twins, the first two girls that we had in the school, they kind of helped us to go through names. And then, of course, it has to mean something mm-hmm. for, you know, for us. So mm-hmm. uh, it stands for helping young people excel. So okay. it's something that a kid would be attracted to, but it is also mm-hmm. um, packed with meaning. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's where it came from. So besides Ms. Weber, mm-hmm. besides knowing, you know, what you wanted to do, what was your driving force? To, to strictly start your school, start something for you, for you to do what you wanted to do? I didn't think that it would be uh, fair for me to leave teaching mm-hmm. because I had so much to offer mm-hmm. and I was so passionate about it. I've always been so passionate about it. Mm-hmm. And I think that oftentimes as educators, as teachers, when we run into those issues, because we all do, mm-hmm. when we run into those issues in the classroom, our first thought, unfortunately, is to escape. Mm-hmm. But I think that that's a di- that does a disservice to not only us, because we went into it for a reason, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. it also does a disservice to the kids that would benefit from us being in the room yeah. with them. Mm-hmm. So I think that that was, for me, it was just a natural move to say, you know what? No, I'm not going to stop teaching. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not going to give up on the kids that truly need me, but I'm going to find a different vehicle. Mm-hmm. Um, and hype for me is the different vehicle. Mm-hmm. We're not a traditional school. Mm-hmm. We don't, we don't pretend to be, we don't, we're not attempting to be, mm-hmm. we're just, um, we're working on making sure that we are a beacon of hope for kids who need the kinds of services we provide. So, so you mentioned that, you know, you understand and you feel like you are not, and you know that mm-hmm. you are not your traditional school. Mm-hmm. So, you know, what makes, not what makes you different, but first things first, how do you get your students? How do people know about Hype Academy? Ah, that's a good question. Uh, a couple of ways. One is um, through, which is our, one of our main vehicles of marketing, which is social media. Mm-hmm. So a lot, of our, uh, a lot of our families come to us because they say, oh, I saw you on Instagram. Mm-hmm. I saw you on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And because we have a pretty consistent presence there. Uh, but one of the main ways that we get our kids is through referrals, Mm -hmm. through uh, those such as yourself, like Mm -hmm. deans at schools schools. um, Mm -hmm. that know that this is a good kid, Mm -hmm. but this is not the environment for this kid. And we don't want to just throw them in high school. We don't want high school to deal with them. No, we Mm -hmm. don't want to just, and we don't want to throw them away because Mm -hmm. we've gotten kids that maybe, uh, they did not fit the mold. We've gotten kids that have gotten, quite honestly, put out of other private schools, Mm or uh, we're not getting the kinds of services they needed, whether mm-hmm. it was gifted mm-hmm. or sped serv- other sped services. Mm-hmm. So, um, so we have built relationships also with people in other schools mm-hmm. that say, you know what? No, when, when I find that kid, that family who would be a perfect match for you all, mm-hmm. I'm sending them your way. And, mm-hmm. um, but we're also now beginning to uh, be more accessible to parents because we started out as a homeschool, but in okay. 2017 we went before the Bessie board and became a, um, a state non-public school. So now we are also on one app. Okay. So we okay. have, uh, we have families that are finding us through one app now as well. So you are, so that's the first I'm in education. So I never heard that you mm-hmm. guys are a private school, mm-hmm. but you also part of the one app system. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So we are part of the one app system because those kids who are looking for scholarships, they can get scholarships to attend and on the state scholarship program. Mm -hmm. Um, And one of the reasons we did that, like I said, we started out as a homeschool where it was just strictly private pay, our Mm -hmm. parents paid tuition. But we found that we were losing uh, our retention rate was was not where we wanted it to be, because many families, although they loved the environment, Mm -hmm. wanted their kids here, they uh, could not afford it. They just couldn't afford it. So we decided in 2017 that we would try to provide more access by uh, applying to the state to become a non-public school, which would give our parents access to scholarship money to attend. Okay, so tell me a little bit the typical day of Ariane, the co-founder of Hype Academy, a wife your personal other business. You have many businesses, so we're going we're gonna to touch on that a little bit. But tell me your day as Ariane as the co-founder of Hype Academy. Girl. Because you told me a few minutes ago that you did not like to wake up in the morning. And you was like, this teacher thing is not for me. Mm-hmm. But now here you are owning a school. Yeah. And I'm sure it wasn't much different. 
So what's your day? Oh, like? I, I, I love waking up. <laughs> Absolutely love it. I'm up uh, during the school year. I'm up at about 330. And uh, I use that time. I, I, I have a. I'm very, very structured, and you know they call me OCD. But I have a. I use mind maps to just map mm-hmm. out my day. But a typical day, three thirty, I'm up. I'm in devotion. I'm praying uh, and uh, fixing breakfast probably before I leave the house. But I'm usually here at hype by five, about five o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. My kids and of course I'm prepping. Mm-hmm. Prepping for the day, making sure everything's good. And my staff usually comes in um, about 6.30, 6.45. My kids come in about 7. And uh, we're here from 7 to 2.15 for the most part. For the most part, I am here on site. Uh, and uh, because we are a pretty, a, a very small, mm-hmm. uh, intimate setting. Mm-hmm. And for the most part, I'm here on site till about 2.15. And then after 2.15, I'm taking care of other things like working out and making sure that I'm staying healthy, mm-hmm. self-care, mm-hmm. and uh, and then I'm working on my other businesses mm-hmm. once I'm once I'm home. Or other business. She said I have a lot. But working on my other things mm-hmm. afterwards. Mm-hmm. So, But dedicated time from about 5 in the morning till about 2.15, I'm usually working on something as it relates to height. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Dedication. So it, yeah. definitely take, it definitely takes dedication it to does. be an entrepreneur. It does. What would you say... Um, what would you say if there is one okay. um a fear a business fear not a personal fear you know just business like especially with the pandemic going on right now okay. we'll talk about that a little bit in a second but with everything going on not sure what the direction is for opening up the world again you know what is a fear that you may have about you know your school and about your business uh, that's a good question. I'm very intentional about my words. So I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't say that I have a fear mm-hmm. of, of anything. I think that the one thing that if I, uh, because, and especially because during the pandemic, we have been so blessed. We have truly been blessed. Our mm-hmm. kids were already working online. Um, our, our curriculum is an online curriculum. Okay. Although they are okay. on site, mm-hmm. all of our kids have laptops all of them are so we have been tremendously blessed in that our families were already accustomed to right. what we were doing, mm-hmm. uh, and um, and we did that partially because when I when we when my husband and I set up the school, we set it up right after Katrina when a lot of kids were dispersed mm-hmm. and the work was here in New Orleans mm-hmm. underwater. Mm-hmm. So we wanted there to be something in the cloud where right. no matter where our kids were, they right. could um, they could work, but. So with that being said, and then our kids already work from home every Friday. Um, Okay. So they were already accustomed to working from home. And so we had a very seamless transition. We were blessed to do that. Good. If I, if I had to say there's something that I am most um, concerned about about. Mm -hmm. to make sure that this does not happen, I think it would have to do with impact. I, I, it is very, very important for me to not get sidetracked mm-hmm. and to make sure that every decision we make is because of the kids that we service right the families i don't want to lose mm-hmm. them mm-hmm. in all of the the um the the things that are going mm-hmm. on i want to make sure that every decision we make is on behalf of them to mm-hmm. benefit them so i think that's the main thing so speaking you know with the pandemic speaking about the transition and the change You know, um, you are a co-founder of a school, so I'm sure you're getting a little bit more than your typical educator is getting. What what are your worries of your parents? Mm -hmm. How you know what has been your conversation like with parents? You know, you already said your transition wasn't as hard. It was seamless for you guys because this was something that you were already practicing. Yeah. But, you know, um, being in the building, being around you, being with you and being with those kids you know, even though you already were in the digital world, but I'm sure just the the uh, the actual appearance and the actual, you know, being with the kids actually mm-hmm. impacted them as well. So, you know, what are your conversations like with those children? What are your conversations like with those parents? Because you're getting different conversations than the teacher. You know, yeah. you're getting those, you know, different type of conversations happen with different people. So what are your conversations like? Uh, well, with the kids, especially, uh, when the pandemic, uh, when we left school, I believe March 13th was mm-hmm. the last time that we actually were in the building mm-hmm. together. Those are and, dates uh, that we'll never forget. March forget 13th, them. Hurricane mm-hmm. Katrina, August 20th, like we, we would we never forget those forget dates them. now. Won't forget them. And, uh, so, and now, you know, just like there was, there's now a pre-Katrina, there's mm-hmm. now a pre-pandemic, mm-hmm. pre-corona. 
Um, and uh, the conversations that we've had with our kids, because we would see our kids every single day. Like we didn't miss a day mm-hmm. where um, our kids would log on. We found out what Wednesday, Thursday, by Monday, we had our Zoom set up. Mm-hmm. We were ready to meet them online because we do morning meeting every morning. Mm-hmm. And um, the conversation with them at first, it was exciting. Mm-hmm. It was different. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, we get to, you know, we're online. And then eventually they were like, man, I miss y'all. Mm-hmm. I miss my friends. I want to be in the building. I want to be there. I want to do PE. Mm-hmm. All the stuff they were complaining about. Uh-huh. <laughs> I didn't want to do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so the conversation with our kids has been, I want to be in school. I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be home inside all day. Mm-hmm. The conversations with parents is a little bit different and it's been a little bit eye-opening. With our parents, this is one of the ways that I found out exactly what our parents have to deal with. Mm -hmm. Um, There's many of our parents are essential workers. Mm -hmm. So they're working in the hospitals. They're Mm -hmm. seeing the death. They are working uh, on the front line at grocery stores Mm -hmm. and things of that nature. So the conversation for them or with them has been, I'm trying to juggle this. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to balance making sure he's doing his work. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I got to kiss him while y'all are on morning meeting. We've had parents. Mm -hmm. I got to kiss you on your forehead and I got to go because Mm -hmm. I'm on my way to work. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then we've had uh, at least one family where there has been death after death in that particular family. So those conversations are the difficult Mm -hmm. conversations that we've had to have with, have have to have, uh, we have had with families and uh, moving forward, now it gives us the perspective mm-hmm. to um, to begin to make sure that we include the kids mm-hmm. and we include their families mm-hmm. in on mm-hmm. the decisions that we're making as right. we move forward. Right, which yeah. is very important. Right vital. Now. It's yes. vital. So um, you haven't had to make many changes, but what, what's one change that you've had to make with the pandemic? One change has been... Um, well, of course, we're not in the building itself. Uh, we have had to limit the time that we see one another. So we've had to basically put the kids on a schedule, on even on Zoom, because mm-hmm. we've been using Zoom along with our platform that we use for our curriculum. But I'm not seeing, the kid is not just sitting online all day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we've had to actually set up schedules where we have a certain amount of time where, okay, we're, our staff, the team is online from this time to this time. Mm-hmm. So any student that says, oh, I'm stuck on a lesson, I need help studying for a test, mm-hmm. they have to just log back on during like that hours. window. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that has been one of the, the biggest changes um, because otherwise kids are just kind of online all day and they're it, it just doesn't work well with mm-hmm. families, especially a mom who says, I got to, you know, I need him to log off because my other kid needs Has to use the computer, use computer. Yeah. or I need, uh, I need her to log off because I'm, I'm on my way to work and I need to bring her by my mom mm-hmm. or something like that. So we, we found that it was more beneficial for us to say, look, we are here. The team is online from this time to this time. We take a break and then we get back online in right. the afternoon Um, So we've had to make, that's the biggest change is to try to adjust our schedule to accommodate the families. It sounds like Hyper Academy kids are ready for college. It sounds like they are ready to take those online courses. They understand office hours, that window. It sounds like they are, they are on top of it. Um, What has been the most satisfying moment um, pre-corona, after, like during the corona? What has been your most pleasing and satisfying moment here at Hype. Man, it is, uh, there are many, there are many, many, many. Um, one could be when uh, one of my students said, I miss hugging you, Miss J. Oh. You know, just mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Um, so that is, that's satisfying because I spend so much time fussing at them. <laughs> you right. know, I'm, I'm constantly saying, look, you know, you got to get this done. Let's go, let's mm-hmm. go. The help is here, mm-hmm. right? So uh, we spend so much time Fussing at them, but cheering them on, mm-hmm. holding them accountable. Mm-hmm. So it's it's kind of like what they miss. that's what they miss. Mm-hmm. They miss that in your you know that that in your face nurturing, mm-hmm. but also in your face. Miss mm-hmm. J is gonna hold me accountable. Yes, the team yes. at Hype is gonna hold me accountable. Yes. So they miss that interaction, um, and that was satisfying to me. But I think the most satisfying was uh, a week or so ago when we did our virtual awards day, 
and graduation ceremony. Mm -hmm. We had three seniors this year that okay. graduated. Okay. And uh, so that makes, our, I think that brings us up to eight that have graduated from height. Okay. And the most satisfying moment is sitting on that virtual platform and having over 50 parents and students on that platform and the parents saying, and in tears, saying, I don't know what I would do without y'all. I don't know what I would do without y'all, mm -hmm. without you all at height. And I think that is what makes the whole year. Yeah. It makes it worth it. It makes it worth it. Going through all of this, Ooh, all, all of the this. headache, all of the change, all, everything, yes. it makes it worth it, it when you it actually hear it. those words. Absolutely. It does. Um, you know, coming from a an educator and a parent, mm -hmm. you know, it definitely, you know, definitely makes a difference. I mean, my daughter graduated from eighth grade on yesterday, her little eighth grade promotional uh, ceremony. It was a drive-by graduation. And of course, you know, I feel like I'm over it. I, I was feeling like I was over it. Yeah. I was feeling like this is eighth grade. She still got seniors though. <laughs> like I'm, you know, she's about to walk into high school. Like right. if y'all don't do anything, I'm fine. Yeah. Like, that 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 was my answer to the survey. Yeah. If y'all don't do nothing, I'm good. Just mail me her report card and I'm fine. Mm -hmm. But yesterday, after um, hearing her accomplishments that she did for the whole eighth grade year, um, all while going through changes you know waiting to see what was going to happen with high school we had a, um, a big death in our family just all of those things that seeing an eighth grader go through um you think children are, are resilient you think that they're fine they're gonna bounce back but they were affected just as well absolutely and to see my baby go across in her little car and receive her things i was all in tears yeah. and they was like not the mama who said we didn't have to have this not the mama who said she was good with not having it. And I really enjoyed it. They did a great job. Um, I'm happy it's over with, of course. But I am just, I'm happy. She she now can take her little break before she goes to high school. But it was definitely a good thing to see. You know, yeah. um, you don't, just like you say, you don't really miss something until it's gone. Or you don't really see the effect that it had on you. Yeah. So, of course, I was one of those parents that just was like... I'm gonna go let's go or whatever yeah. but I really enjoyed it so I can understand yeah you know I can understand you saying that you're sitting there seeing those people those parents you know enjoy it and appreciate it absolutely and I was definitely one of those parents that didn't think that um it was needed yeah but it definitely was yeah. so you know I definitely come in the leaders for making those type of decisions because I know some schools still haven't done anything yeah. for their kids yeah so that is important especially after years and years of hard work and then the last three months just you know sitting at a computer that's a lot it is a lot that is a, lot, a lot to for, deal with yes. it's a lot for anybody but yes. especially for our kids who are yes. experiencing and, and we think that they're fine we think that they're enjoying this time off but it's still hard absolutely and so it takes it's it's people like yourself it's educators that do it you know people think that the only essential workers out here are nurses doctors you know the grocery store frontline people People think that those are the only essential workers, yeah. but educators are definitely 100% like beyond yeah. essential, if you ask me, because we need it. Yeah. Our kids need the education. Absolutely. Um, recent graduate, mm -hmm. college graduate, just walked out the, just graduated. She just had her digital, her, her virtual graduation. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to someone that says, I want to be in education? Okay. Or oh, I thought I wanted to be in education, <laughs> but. After I, what I just saw with this pandemic, schools are doing this, schools are doing that. I don't know if I want to be an educator anymore. Okay. What advice would you give to a college graduate um, that wanted to do that originally, but now they kind of, they may have changed their mind? Uh, I would say that um, this is the best time. Mm -hmm. This is the best time because it's almost like a boot camp almost like a training camp okay. so you get in at a time where it, it is difficult things mm -hmm. are shifting mm -hmm. um, perspectives are changing uh, things are not normal, mm -hmm. Our new normal. Is, <laughs> right our new normal so this is i would say it's it's almost like if you're buying stocks buy low mm -hmm. this is this is the ground floor this is ground zero mm -hmm. so you get an opportunity to get in now 
and tell it what you want it to look like. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I would say this is the perfect time mm -hmm. to get into education, to get to become a teacher, to follow that path, mm -hmm. because you get to call a lot of the shots mm -hmm. because in schools where, you know, we thought that it was just one way to get it done. Mm -hmm. Now we're pulling together task force forces mm -hmm. to say, okay, how are we going to handle technology? How are we going to handle this? Mm -hmm. So now you get to be a voice in, uh, in those organizations that are making changes mm -hmm. because of this. So there's no time like the present. So let's flip it a little bit. All right. What advice would you give a current teacher Got it. who's thinking about being in a leadership role, mm -hmm. but see that the pandemic has made a lot of changes and they might say, Oh, girl, the leaders can have that. I'm going to just stay right here in the, in the classroom. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give that person? I would say none of us are better uh, when we, none of us are better when one of us diminishes herself, diminishes himself. If, you're, if your goal mm -hmm. has been to, um, to get that promotion, mm -hmm. to become a, 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 a leader in the sense of, I want a, a, a deeper role, a role that is more um, responsible for moving the organization mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. I don't think it helps any of us to shy away from that just because there's difficulty, right? So, um, so I think that the important thing would be to make sure that that was something you wanted in the first place and mm -hmm. you weren't just looking at the limelight, right? right? right. If it was truly something you wanted in the first place, I think this is also the time to step up and, and, and step into those roles. Okay. Yeah. I feel like I know the answer to this next question okay. that I want to ask you. Um, I, I, I really feel like I do because I, I, I know what you said, you know, when you were a fourth grader and when you graduated from high school and stuff like that. So I, I've traveled, I've traveled that journey with okay. you in my mind, Awesome. but what would you, um, if you could, Go back and start over. Mm -hmm. Would this still be Ariane? Would Hype Academy still be you? <laughs> Hype would, instead of being nine years old, Hype would be about 19 years old. I've been teaching for about 19 years. I would have just started my own school. I mean, of course, I, I, I don't believe in regrets. The experience I got is what pushed me here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if I could if I could wrap all the experience up and still have the experience, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would have started hype 19 years ago. Okay. See? Absolutely. Kind of the answer I thought. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't think it was going to be an answer like, oh, girl, I wouldn't have done it. Oh. Like, I would have, you know, girl, did this. I, I, I didn't think that that was, it was it's very the, close. It is the hardest thing I've ever done. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely love it. 100%. Wow. And wow. it is the, it's the, the hardest, hardest thing, thing. The hardest most thing rewarding I've ever done, thing. But the most rewarding. Because I true, I used to feel like a failure walking into my classroom every day. I felt like a failure because my kids were failing. Mm -hmm. Because the system was failing, was failing them. Right? And I was a part of that system. Mm -hmm. I'm, not a, I'm no longer a part of that system. Mm -hmm. And now, so I can truly teach. Mm -hmm. I can truly be the educator that I've always wanted to be. And so with that... I, I couldn't ask for anything more than that, than to wake up looking forward to the job that, that I've chosen to do. So this is, um, you said this year you grad, you had one graduate, so now that makes eight. Well, we had three. Three graduates, that yes. makes eight. So your previous graduates, your, mm -hmm. your five other graduates, mm -hmm. um, your alum, your yes. members of your alumni. Yes, yes, yes. Um, you know, what's your communication with them? Do you, you know... Do you guys have some sort of alumni thing or are you trying to create one? What are those kids doing right that now? That is a good question. Um, we are actually, there's so many things that we're looking forward to creating. So mm -hmm. alum is one. I actually uh, was, we, I was texting one back and forth the other day. She was asking me what hair I had in my head <laughs> for my braids. <laughs> Uh, so so I'm eggs. sending her pictures. This is the she graduated last year. I'm sending her pictures of the hair that I have in my head so she could get her mm -hmm. hair braided. Um, but she's in school. She is um, working on, I want to say she's working on a business degree. We have one who just joined the police academy. Okay. Uh, we have one who was in nursing school. Mm -hmm. And uh, so our communication with them, uh, there are a few of them that I constantly stay in contact with mm -hmm. via social media. Mm -hmm. And for and they, of course, they come back all the time. Mm -hmm. So 
uh, the beauty of it is it's such a small group that mm. we we've stayed in contact. Right. But I, I yeah, but I we are looking at now that we're growing because next year we'll be doubling the size of our school. Congratulations. So um thank you, thank you. So now we're going to be we're 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 in a position now where we're beginning to look at establishing Okay. Uh, alumni association mm-hmm. and things of that nature. So it, I, I love it being on the ground floor and we'll be able to look back. I know we were mentioned in a school mm-hmm. that is the oldest right. private school right. in, the, in the country. Right. And um, I, I, I expect that we'll be able to look back many years from now and say, huh, you remember when we started mm-hmm. that? Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, but we're keeping in touch with them. Okay, great. Um, right now, um, you know, people probably tend to forget, you know, owning a school, you're an entrepreneur, you are your own business, you you own your own business. What advice would you give to a business owner right now um, to be doing right now while the world has stopped? Ooh, yes. While, you know, we might be looking at it as a horrible moment. Mm-hmm. Um, but what advice would you give to someone right now today while the world has stopped? What would you advise them to be doing? Double down. Double down and create. Mm-hmm. Double down and create. The the world for me, I mean, my when I like I said, I'm up at 3 30 in the morning during the school during the school year. And um, of course that makes, you know, I'm I'm sleep by seven o'clock. <laughs> but uh but when the world is moving, you know, it's almost I always say it's like a moving train. Like I'm mm-hmm. always in my life, I've always been kind of running behind that moving train, just mm-hmm. trying to make trying to keep up. And with this pandemic, and and definitely uh, my prayers and thoughts go out to those families that have been impacted by death and mm-hmm. sickness and uh, things of that nature. Uh, but I would say it's an opportunity to double down the things that you've been wanting to do for years mm-hmm. in your organization, in your business. Uh, this is that moment when you can literally map it out and then begin execution. So that's why I say double down and use this time to create. So refine whatever it is that you want to get done. Mm -hmm. And now take this opportunity to develop relationships, to get into those Zoom calls, get on those webinars, uh, get into those virtual meetings, connect with other people who are doing something similar to what you're doing. And uh, and those who are doing things that are way out of your level of comfort. Right. And begin to make those connections and, and use this time to create. So we are now here with our power question. We love this power question. Um, And we like to ask all of our ladies, give me one book that has, that you have read, that has inspired you or helped you with your business. One book, because we all need a book to read. This is the perfect time to be reading a book probably. Um, So give us one book, one book that you enjoy reading, help you with. Yes, I everything. Yes, yes, yes. I would have to say, and it's it's old, but it changed my life. Hmm. Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Yep. <laughs> I've read many, many books since then. Mm-hmm. But that book, reading it, I want to say I was in college when I read that book. Mm-hmm. Prior to college, um, I grew up, I'm number eight of my mom's eight kids. Oh, wow. And yes. And oh, wow. Up, yes. I just thought, like, it, it hit me again. <laughs> like, number eight. I'm number of eight, eight. Of eight. And uh, growing up, you know, desire, just the ninth ward, just kind of growing up as the youngest single mom who was a paraeducator. She was a teacher's aide for 23 years. Oh, wow. So, uh, which is the other person who inspired me to go into education, mm-hmm. my mom. And um, so the, but growing up in that situation, I, even, although I wanted to be in education, I could never see myself starting an education company. Mm-hmm. I always saw myself as an educator in a mm-hmm. system. Mm-hmm. When I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, that is what shifted my mindset okay. to help me to understand that you can still teach, mm-hmm. but you don't have to be a part of anybody's system. Mm-hmm. You can teach, you can do what you love to do, but you can create your own yes. legacy and yes. create your own wealth. Yes. So Rich Dad, Poor Dad is what opened my mind to understand that I didn't have to work for anybody and I could still be wealthy and I could still leave wealth for generations uh following me so and i could still change my family tree which is what i'm 
I'm intent on doing. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Eight of eight. I'm still on it. Eight of eight. Yes. Wow. Absolutely. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yes, ma'am. That's amazing. So yeah. you had seven big brothers and sisters. I had five brothers and um, my, one of my brothers has re passed away a couple of years ago and I have two sisters that are older than I am. So you have yeah. five dads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 A second and a third mom because yeah. they want to boss you. Yeah. And you made it out. I look, made it out, because I made it out, people, honey. With eight? Yes. I oh, made God. it out. I made it out. Good job. And mama, mama did it. She did it. That's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. So we want to tell our viewers how to find you. Sure. Where to find you. Mm -hmm. Tell us about Hype Academy, where they can find out information about Hype Academy. And... This is your selling moment. Oh, for is hype. it? Is it? So yes. should I look at the camera? Look hey. at the camera. Yeah, no more me. Hello. This oh, is no. all about the okay, viewers so and about you. It's no longer about the <laughs> All right. Uh, but I, I do want to thank you uh, for for tuning in. I am Ariane Crave Jala. So uh, I am uh, definitely, uh, you can definitely follow me personally. But also, if you want to follow Hype Academy, we are on Facebook at Hype Academy. And we are on Instagram at at Hype Academy. So we are on both of those. And uh, we also have our website, hypeacademy.com, H-Y-P-E. And where are you located? We are located in New Orleans East. So we are near Hain on Crowder Boulevard, 7901 Crowder Boulevard. And we are housed in the District 2 CEC building. All right. You guys heard it here first. And um, I mentioned earlier that Ariane has another business, even though this is about Hype Academy, this is also about being an entrepreneur, being a woman that has businesses and doing her thing out here. So I want you to tell them a little bit, um, outside of Hype Academy, mm -hmm. what else does Ariane do? Oh, well, we are, uh, we work under the umbrella of Pack Leader Enterprises mm -hmm. and we do, uh, I'm a... A motivational speaker so that's one of the things that I do I am the author of two books the first book that I wrote was in 2017 it's called teach your own kid schools <laughs> can't do it alone mm. and I uh, we all need that <laughs> <laughs> and I just released a book in uh, October on my 40th birthday uh, a book called um, uh, under pressure a woman's guide to resisting the urge to quit and I wrote that book uh, while my mom was passing away, she was dying last summer, and uh, I wrote that book in about seven days, and wow. that is the book that is now that I'm using to help many, many women, uh, okay. especially women who are professionals and who are moms, and all of the women that we see. Um, I'm using that book to to minister in a way to those women. So, and we do all of that under the umbrella of our other business, which is Pack Leader Enterprises. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I told you guys, this lady has a lot of things going on and still managed to educate our kids. Mm -hmm. So that is wonderful. We appreciate you. We thank you for having us in your beautiful school. Mm -hmm. um, I can't wait to take a little small tour. Um, this is not the end of Ariane, guys. You'll hear from her again, I'm sure. We're going to have a part two, part three, because we're going to talk about Ariane Speaks. Yes. We're going to meet with her again one day so we can hear all about her two wonderful books. And um, thank you. Thank you again for tuning in with 101 with Orion.